My goodness, there's smoke coming out of it, which is not surely not a good sign. This is a public building, right? I can just walk in. I can. It's a public library. People, calm yourselves. The fire was small and has been contained. Allah's wrath is upon us. Most of our books are safe. The danger has passed. Old man, how did this fire start? Old man. <laughs> Fazil Fahim is old. As old as the house of wisdom which he commands. Forgive me, Ustadi. I spoke in haste. Can I help? No. The fire has been quenched by the Watermaster's bucket brigades. Okay. <laughs> Where can I find Ahmad? No, what happened here? Who started these fires? Ruffians, I suppose. Enemies of the Khalifa, to be exact. What sort of books were they burning? It is too soon to tell. Perhaps the caretaker of books would know. I am searching for Ahmad ibn Musa. Ah, yes. He has a workshop here, but I have not spoken to him lately. Peace be upon you, Elder. I shall go. I still need to find Ahmad ibn Musa. But I should also speak to the caretaker of books in the library. Hmm. We have a mystery here. A fire. But this is actually not a problem anymore. Where is Hunayn? He owes me money. Hunayn. I don't know. That's the caretaker of books. Somebody posted guards around the library. I should check the, the second floor. Uh, what is going on these days? <laughs> the second floor. <laughs> is this the way to the second floor? Couldn't I have gone? Oh god. The library is guarded. Something must have happened. A death? Mm. This is quite bad. The caretaker of books is here. I only have two focus things. Let's go this way first, shall we? Oh, there are guards downstairs as well. Assassinate. Library etiquette. Remain silent in the library. Return books to their proper shelves. Do not take volumes without authorization. All reasonable demands. Oh, I could have climbed in this window as well. Oh shit. Is <laughs> he not seeing me? Oops. do our focus thing but we need to get rid of the other one first
didn't hear any. Hold on! Honestly, I should not be killing those people because they didn't do anything wrong, right? They're just investigating a murder or something. Something happened here. There are guards on the roof. There are guards everywhere. Okay, that's the same. The store's barred. That's a problem. What's over there? A dead body? So actually... He's still alive. I don't know. It seemed like he had a vision cone. But maybe not. Oh, he's, need, he's not moving from his spot. The caretaker of books. He's dead. He's dead, but he wrote Mansach in his own blood. I wonder. Mansach? Okay. Something in his hand. Fabric. Torn from a woman's gown. But whose? Strange fires and a dead caretaker. Horrifying. I should hurry. Uh, now I worry about Ahmad. <sighs> Out of ammo. This is, uh, this wasn't great. A cat in a tree, anything. Okay, never mind. Find out why the caretaker of books wrote this place's name in blood. The scriptorium, was it? It's somewhere else? It's not here? I think we can leave through that window.
this way. Wait, it's completely elsewhere. The scriptorium. Okay, then we should find Ahmad first, maybe. Find his office. Yeah. Oops, I'm so sorry, everyone. Um. Oh, we should. Who are you? Greetings, Yaham. If I may. Where is the scholar Ahmad ibn Musa? Ah, yes. The most adventurous of the Banu Musa. His workshop is right behind me. Thank you, Yaham. Oh, all right. Okay. But... He didn't say whether he saw him or not. Entertainment took many forms at the Abbasid court, from elaborate falcon hunting expeditions to buffoons being catapulted into pools. But one type of event epitomized the period, the intellectual salon, or majlis. Used to describe both the social gathering and the location where it took place, a typical majlis featured intellectual debates, musical performance, poetry recitation, and wine drinking. Salons were held in various venues, from colorful gardens to elite estates. Caliphs sometimes presided over them, but ministers and courtiers were also keen to show their sophistication by hosting their own events. A majlis was indeed an opportunity for refined entertainment for members of the elite, as well as a chance for the guest performers to draw the attention of these elites through magisterial lessons on astronomy lively debates between Muslims and non-Muslims on religious tenets, or free-flowing discussions full of witty repartees and crude sexual jokes, newcomers would expect to make themselves known. Instant fame and fabulous wealth were on the line in the form of sponsorship for one's work, or even a permanent position as a colorful scholar. Okay, discussions? Religious? and scientific discussions in the form of a comedy stand-up. <laughs> Interesting. All right, let's go to his office, workshop, whatever. Ahmad. Basim, hey, nine fingers over here. Nihal. Nihal. What do you have there, sneak thief? A book. I managed to save at least one from the fire. If they catch you stealing... They cut off a finger. No, wait. A whole hand. That is not funny. Then don't laugh. All right, you are in a mood, and I have things to do. Nothing that concerns you. Oh, secret hidden one stuff. What are you doing this time? Stabbing? Stealing? Stabbing and then stealing? <laughs> that is your specialty, Nihal. Just because you lost a finger does not mean you've lost your touch. <laughs> Sounds like meta commentary on the Assassin's Creed games. All these tools and books looks like Ahmad's room. But where is he? What is Nihal even doing here? Isn't she back in... what's its name? Unbar? <laughs> Shouldn't she be in Unbar instead? My goodness. I can move the bookshelves? Why? I don't like this already. The Abbasid period was characterized by important achievements, 
that profoundly shaped the pursuit of scientific knowledge. One of the most compelling is the emergence of what we think of today as the scientific method, a culture of checking the results and the data of other intellectuals, whether those were once contemporaries or famous figures from antiquity such as Ptolemy. Tours such as this mortar or this alembic were crucial in this activity. The scholars of the time were competing for the Khalif's patronage and funds. They therefore needed new ways to acquire knowledge and justify their discoveries. This stimulated the thirst for translated works of science from historical or foreign authors. Check in the astronomical calculations or mathematical proofs of these famous scientists and if possible improving upon them or even proving them wrong was a great way to make oneself known. Scholars working in the House of Wisdom therefore feverishly tested and commented on the results of their predecessors and rivals. They replicated experiments and tried to improve their methods and ways of calculations. When their results differed from their peers, they tried to explain why and push their investigation further. The attempts to calculate the Earth's circumference through the reproduction of an ancient Greek experiment by a team of mathematicians, including the great Al-Khwarizmi, and the improvements made on this team's methods and results by Al-Biruni, are the best examples of the implementation of this system of scientific method and peer-reviewed experiments. Wow, this even dates back to this era. Cool. What was Ahmad working on? This looks like a water mill or something. A heart shaped something over there. <laughs> Ahmad always signs his work. This is definitely his doing. Well, it is his workshop after all, so that's no surprise, I would say. Measuring tools, like my father used to own. But these are Ahmad's. This is not the door. The letter says these books are for Ahmad. There is a secret room. Another book of poetry by Harib. David would love this. Seems like Arab and Ahmad would get along. Wait, three glasses? No, two glasses. Or three, I don't know. It's marked here, but I can't interact with it for some reason. Means he wasn't alone or something. Yeah. Can't move this one. Ah, nice. Hidden works, secret works. Ahmed seems to be working on something new, but what? Diagrams, machine tools, and other oddities. This is definitely Ahmed's workshop. But where can he be? I mean, this wasn't in question whether this was his workshop Pardon or not. me! May I help you? Who are you? I am looking for Ahmad ibn Musa. Do you know where I can find him? I may be able to help you. Follow me. Okay. You come at a convenient time. Yes, Is sir. this your first visit to the House of Wisdom? No. A friend and I used to sneak in as kids. We taught ourselves to read in your library. Oh. All young people should follow your worthy example. The caretakers who chased us out of the stacks every day did not think so. <sighs> Merely doing their jobs. And what did you study in the House of Wisdom? 
I loved poetry and heroic tales. My friend preferred pagan gods and dark magic. Oh, shit. <laughs> and did you follow your youthful passion and become a scholar? When the whole world awaits. No. You might say I am a man on a mission. Ah, well. What about your friend? No, no, she... Still searches for something. Though what that is, I do not know. A shame. It's not far now. Hurry, hurry. Oh no, Nihal. Oh, God, Pagan Nihal. Gods. What I'm the? under attack. What? You lie. Are you serious? Oh, oh shit. Oh God. Let's talk, hmm? Ouch! I, I parried! I am your fate! Face me! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! The back is vulnerable. That's a good one, okay? okay, we can do this, we can do this. Oh, we cannot do this! <laughs> Shit. Gotta be kidding me. I knew this was a trap. It was too good to be true. That guy. This guy. Is this your first visit to the House of Wisdom? Shut up. A friend and I used to sneak in as kids. We taught ourselves to read in your library. All young people should follow your worthy example. The caretakers who chased us out of the stacks every day did not think so. Merely doing the jobs. And what did you study in the House of Wisdom? I loved poetry and heroic tales. My friend preferred pagan gods and dark magic. She sounds like she's on the path to become an <laughs> order of the ancients thing. And become a scholar? When the whole world awaits. No. You might say I am a man on a mission. Ah, well... What about your friend? No, no, she... still searches for something. Though what that is, I do not know. A shame. It's not far now. Hurry, hurry. I am worried about Nihal. I'm worried. I'm worried about Nihal. Because pagan gods and dark magic, that sounds exactly something the Order is interested in. God, help! I'm under attack! What? Oh, fuck. God, what the? Oh, shit. Oh, what the? Good. Stay grounded. <sighs> Just shit. Okay, just one. One person should be easy. Three. Three hits. Oh, what the? Oh, shit. Die. Oh, I'm not... I'm not in a good shape. 
What the heck was that? Please, don't hurt me. You led me into a trap. I should slay you where you stand. Spare kindly, Hamid. Then tell me, where is Ahmad ibn Musa? Please, sir. I don't know where he is. Truly, I do not. Then why lead me into an ambush? He... he made me do it. Who is he? Not Ahmad, surely. I don't know his name. For he always wears a mask. And what does this masked man want? He commands me to keep everyone away from the House of Wisdom's dig site. Or else... Or else what? He will hurt my head. Like with the others. Please, spare humble Hamid. Where is this dig site? It's in the wilderness. Outside of the city. Here, let me draw you a map. Hmm. We need to get away from here with all the those bodies. To the dig site. Oh shit. <sighs> Thank goodness he got an elixir. Well, that was uh, not great. Okay, a strange design Ahmad is walking on, has a workshop, okay, and we're going to the excavation site next. A masked man threatened Hamid to keep quiet. One of the Order of the Ancients. The Book Burner, another Order member. Scriptorium. What about the book collector? Who is that? Inside? Outside? Above? No. Inside. Thank you. And you are? Huh. That is a lot of books. Oh, oh, do, do not think I am a librarian. I am a writer. Many of these are my own works. Though I do collect, it is true. This city hides other rare and ancient tomes. If you should find one, bring it here. I'll make it worth your time. Not as yet. Oh. Perhaps next time we will both find more than idle words and disturbance. <laughs> okay. Seems like it's something, some collectible that we can do. Okay. So this is the scriptorium. Um, the book collector. Okay. Um, the scriptorium. And where is the excavation site? He said it was outside of the city, right? Hamid's map can be found in the investigation manual, okay. Hamid's map... I have received a map showing the location southwest of Baghdad. There's also an oasis on the way. Oasis and then south of the oasis, okay. It's probably here somewhere. No, that's the oasis. That's the excavation site, probably. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, then let's go to the scriptorium first. Because we're already in the vicinity. Oh, cool. Oh! In Abbasid Baghdad, every scholar knew that the earth was spherical. They knew it because they had read about it in translated ancient Greek manuscripts. Most importantly, Ptolemy's Almagest, which was translated by the great Abbasid astronomer Al Sufi. They also knew it because they had used simple geometric concepts and trigonometric equations to calculate its circumference. Around 240 BCE, a Greek mathematician named Eratosthenes had used shadows projected by wooden rods to calculate that two cities were separated by 7 degrees or 1 50th of a sphere. He then multiplied the distance between these two points by 50 to get the size of the Earth within 5% of modern calculations. Sometime around 8.30, a team of 70 mathematicians, including the famous mathematician al khwarizmi recreated his experiment. Improving on their predecessor's method, they tried to diminish the risk of error by reducing points separated by a single degree. Traveling from Baghdad to the surrounding desert and trying to follow a north-south road, they stopped when they reached a point where the elevation of the pole star had changed by a degree. Their calculations were similar to those of Eratosthenes. Later, another scientist, Al-Biruni, got even better results by using a mountain as his measuring rod. Both expeditions were motivated in part by the desire to know the extent of the territory compared to their rivals and by Islam's requirement to pray facing Mecca's Kaaba, no matter your position in the world. A proof that religious belief and scientific pursuits don't always come into conflict. I mean, back then they couldn't even come into conflict, because if you do, you're bred into heresy and then you're gonna, you're gonna be ostracized. It's no good. Um, there's a chest here somewhere. Above me still. Can I climb the building? Ladder? I'm not welcome here. I don't have any tools. My health is terrible. Everything's terrible. <sighs> Shit. Oh shit. Keep an eye out for you. Nothing gets the jump on us. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Damn, what do I do? 
That's pretty difficult. There's a key? Is that a key? I would need to get further up. Oh god. Well. Oh shit! They don't know where I am, right? You know what? I, I don't have the right tools to do this, I don't think. So, I think we should go back to our bureau first, stock up on, stock up on tools, and also get new tools. Well met. Oh. Um, up and lock I'm sure you have not been idle. Take a look. We can get a noise maker, a smoke bomb. I think smoke bomb is good. Noise maker. Is that it? All right. Perhaps your skills could be applied here. Here's what I have. I want to upgrade my blow dart so we can berserk people. Poisoned. Enraged. How can I enrage people? I have still no idea. We can poison people. Target can no longer be awakened by other guards. Enraged targets die. Enraged. Oh, that's what I want, right? Berserker dart. Replaces the sleep effect. Deep slumber. Damage does not wake the target. Sleep effect lasts indefinitely targets are poisoned instead of put to sleep This could, this is useful in causing a distraction as well, but it could be, this is very high profile, not, not stealth like, so I'm fine with poison maybe, actually poison, even if they're poisoned they can still see me so Hmm. Target can no longer be awakened by other guards. This might be interesting. We can cause a distraction and also... Mm, they can't be awakened. Poison tip. 
charged throw. Mm, let's see, what do we have for noisemaker? We have a lot of materials actually. Maybe we shouldn't be that stingy. Extended range. Let's get this one. Poison tip. So even if I can't kill people, I can still poison poison them. Corrode body dissolves the corpses of those killed with a knife. What? How? Makes no sense. Honestly. Game. Makes no sense. Maybe you get the smoke bomb upgrade. How long smoke remains active? I think that that is useful, maybe. Nothing else? Alright. Your help is invaluable. Goodbye. Can I fill up everything? Probably not. Quick use. With a throw knife equipped, hold mm -hmm, to quickly use a non projectile tool. What? Okay, three, two is a smoke bomb, was it? Hold on. Smoke bomb, okay. Two is a three bo uh, smoke bomb, three is the noise maker. And if I do that, I will... Okay. Sorry everyone, sorry. Yeah. I need to visit a merchant. Actually, what the heck is this? The Banu Musa brothers. Oh, we already got that, but there is a... What is this? Mysterious letter, a sword dancer and mercenary? A sword dancer who is also the daughter of the famed merchant Ali Baba. She requires aid looking for her father. When did we get this mission? I have no idea. When did we get this? Hmm, how do I get in? There's no way in, into that building. This is not a door. <laughs> this is our assassin's bureau. Wait. Wait, is it inside our bureau? <laughs> okay. Makes sense, actually. A request for help from Murjana, the daughter of Ali Baba, a trader rich beyond measure. What could the daughter of a famed merchant want? It says to meet her outside the gates of Baghdad. 
Hey everyone, my name is Mojana, an old friend by the name of Beshi pointed me towards you. He told me that you shadowy figures are trustworthy and so I hope you can help me with a delicate and possibly perilous matter regarding my father Alibaba. You have no doubt heard his name, meet me outside the gates south of Baghdad with haste, Mojana. Brother Fulad, while prowling the book markets, I found a copy of the Jamaharat Ashar al Arab. It includes the very poem Kab ibn Zuhay recited in front of the Prophet himself. So moved was the Prophet that he wrapped Zuhair in his mantle. Never has a poet been so honored. You must come over and I shall recite the verses for you and our friends. Yours in the shadow, Tabit. The rest we should have read already, right? All right. I need a merchant. What the? Yeah. Yes. Greetings. Good to see you. Allow me to browse your stock. Here's what I've got. I need a refill. 115. Oh, that's a lot, actually. Nothing further. Can I get a discount? My friend, I'm at your entire disposal. I think I have enough. What have you got today? Plenty of stock just now. 104? That's not 20%, is it? Okay, whatever. 20%. Never leave home without some. Not sure that was 20% discount. What the heck? Have a gear improvement project in mind? Oh, I can buy components here. Interesting. The tools of the trade. God, this costs a lot though. Nothing else. Maybe not today. I must be on my way. Please come again. <laughs> Since we're here already, maybe we can also pay a visit to Tavish. Why can I never mark Davish on my map? Honestly. Alright, this should should do it this way. An hour ago. Dying victory. <laughs> Here. Hello. There he is, the young lion. Okay, I actually have some artifacts for you. I have this for you. A veritable horde you've got there. That's it? That's it? <laughs> oh my god. Hmm. Better gear cannot hurt. No encouragement, no well done. 
Keep well, old man. No small Until we meet again, Basim. Inshallah. Maybe. Maybe we'll meet again. Okay, how many artifacts do we still have in our possession? I have four, but he wants six. I see. Alright, okay, let's make our way to the scriptorium. There's a shard. That person looks suspicious. I should investigate. Is she alone without a bodyguard, really? Another shard. How many shards do we have? Four. So we're missing just one, right, for Nihal? Nihal? Actually, no. <laughs> no. Clues, I found several shards on order members. We need to find the hidden place. And how do we do that? Huh. Do we... I guess if we collect enough shards, it's okay? I don't know. If we connect enough shards, the sacred place will be shown to us, maybe? I don't know. Better keep my eyes open. Oh shit. But isn't this the... Haven't we been here already? These translated excerpts from the myth of Icarus are fascinating. The concept of humanity overcoming natural limits through tools excites me. Perhaps too someday. I could take flight as the man in the myth. There's a tall, isolated rock in the desert far to the south, which would be a perfect launching point. I feel like someone's gonna die here. <laughs> um. Show me everything. Oh shit. You must not fly there now, Enkidu. We are a descriptorium. This is a descriptorium, I see. 